friends, this is Ms. Mason here. We are in Geology Lesson 11. Today we are going to just review the earthquake waves and draw a model of the Earth showing those waves. Okay, let's see. Let's Crust, remember, is the surface of the Earth. This can range from five miles deep to 25 miles deep. In the ocean, it's five. Continental uh, crust is 25. So that's the crust. All right. Mantle. The lithosphere is the outer mantle and the crust together. And the asthenosphere is like the middle mantle. So this is like silly putty. Mantle. I'm not going to label it because we're going to have to uh, draw the leaves here. Then we have the outer core which is liquid, it's melted metals, iron, all right? And then the inner core is a solid iron and nickel. The Pacific plate, and this is the North American plate. It's hypofocus, so that's the focus. That's where the action is, that's where the earthquake starts. That's where the waves are generated from. Directly above that is the epicenter. So epicenter is right above it. And this is the focus. The focus is where the action is. That's where the earthquake, that's where it gets trapped. So if there's two plates, or like they're locked together like this, that area of entrapment, that area is the hy hypo focus, or the, just called the focus. That's where the action is. That's where it starts. That's where the waves are generated from. So the waves are produced from this focus. All right, so we're going to say we're going to look at earthquake waves. Now we're talking about three types of waves. The P wave was the compression wave, and that's the one where the wave moves in the direction of the matter. And the S wave was transverse wave, where the wave moves perpendicular to the direction of the matter. And then we have the surface waves, which are on the surface of the Earth. So from this focus, you're going to generate waves. All right. All right, so if you like a, a pool, if I'm looking down in a pool, um, so like Brutus's water dish, can't really see it now, but if I touch the, the top of the water, so as the water is going to generate waves spreading outwards, cir circles. So if you look at the whole thing, like I so here we have a source of water, I touched here, it generates these waves going outward. And here we have a demonstration of those waves going outward uh, with the turkey having a drink. And you can see every time he touches the surface of that water, or she actually, generates the pattern of waves. And these waves are surface waves, which are actually a combination of longitudinal and transverse waves. And this is just energy flowing through the, the surface of the water as it is dispersed. Look at this on a side view, a lateral view. It would look more like this. So like these are the waves you see, because these are like three-dimensional here. Okay, so this would be a side view. So this is the one you're most familiar with when you see, when you think of waves. But, uh, okay, so anyway, what we have First thing that comes out are P waves are the fastest. They travel through the whole Earth, this earthquake. Um, so P waves and S waves are also often called body waves because they can go through the whole inside of the Earth where surface waves stay on the surface. But surface waves generally are the ones that cause the most damage. Um, because earthquakes, they don't kill people, it's the buildings that actually kill people. So. Okay, so these are the waves. This is the P wave, P. And they come out first. They're fastest moving, they're longitudinal, so the wave goes the same direction that earth shake goes, all right? 
And animals, some, like dogs, sometimes will start barking. They, they can detect these P waves. Um, so sometimes they, they know when that earthquake is going to hit. And there's a, an app that was just made in Berkeley, um, MyShake app it's called. You can download it on your phone and it can detect earthquakes, but it gives you about five seconds warning. So you don't get a whole lot of time, um, but it's, it can detect um, and those P waves are coming. So the P waves, the first ones to come. Um, and these are going to be the first ones to hit the seismometer station. So where they detect earthquakes, these are the ones they're going to feel. So we get um, P waves first. Now S waves that are going to follow. Now targets that don't like it. So I'm trying to be darker. So it's going to be darker. S waves. You notice there are no S waves going on in here because they cannot travel through liquid. So the outer core of the earth is made of melted metals. It's liquefied. So the S waves can't go in there. So this is how we know that the outer core is actually liquid because studying these waves. The waves cannot travel in that liquid. Okay. So why aren't these lines straight? Like if we look at the slinky video, the GIF I showed you, the slinky, when I pushed it, made those longitudinal P waves. The slinky was straight. Why aren't these straight? Okay, I want you to think about it. So that is question number one. Stop and think. Number one. Stop. Think. Your question is, for geology lesson 11, question number one is why haven't I drawn these lines just straight? Why aren't they straight? Stop and think. So stop the video, pause video, think. Okay. Well, the reason is, I'm going to do this for every question. Sometimes you're going to have to figure it out on your own here is think of the density of the mantle. As we go down toward the core, there's a stronger, the gravitational force, right, that's going to pull things that are more dense toward the core. So the less dense things are gonna be away from the core. Okay, so the mantle is not the same density throughout. I said it was like about like silly putty. But if you get down closer to the core, you know how you chew gum or you put in a, I don't know what the, I used to get those hubba bubba. Do they still sell hubba bubba? Bubblicious. I used to love those. God, chew this. I could go through a pack a day easy. But they lose their flavor like after about one minute, I think, is about it, and then it's just like you're chewing on silly putty. All right, if you ever put the, once you put the gum in, it's real soft, it's like, or maybe not the first couple bites, but then it's real soft. All right, so that's kind of like the mantle out here. After you chew that bubble gum for a while, been on it for a few hours, let's say, it starts to harden, it's hard to chew, it's like a, it's a very hard to chew, it's like really like silly putty, real thick. Then that bubblegum starts to become more like this. So you think of the outs, outer mantles more like fresh gum. And then as you go closer and closer to the cords, it, that gum is getting older and older and older. So it's like really hard to chew. It's like, ugh, you need to spit it out. You got to like it from the, you know, the closest trash can. And then you're thinking, of, should I swallow it? But then you remember that myth where it's going to stay in your stomach for seven years. My mom used to always tell me that. Don't swallow your gum. Um, that is not actually true that it doesn't actually stay in your stomach. Uh, but uh, anyways, so this outside outer mantles like fresh gum, as you go, it's still solid. As you go down toward the inner or in the, in the outer the core, it's more like old stale gum that you've been chewing on for hours because it's your last piece. And you're trying to just, you're dying to hold on to that, that sugar. 
Okay, so anyway, here it is. That's the mantle. The reason why these lines are not straight is because they're different densities. So as waves travel, they don't, uh, wait, and I'm, when I talk about waves, we're looking at it like this, but I'm not gonna show this through the whole thing. Um, well, let's just do it. So if I'm gonna, right here, waves traveling. So for example, thunder, hits, you hear thunder. Okay, here are the, let's say the sound waves from thunder. When it hits the glass, like the window, it is going to, it goes from air to glass. So if this is air and this is glass, this is the sound from thunder. Here we have the waves. This is all air, all right? So there's no bending here. But when it gets to glass, the way it bends, it causes the waves to bend. And that's called refraction. Refraction. So why does it do that? Uh, it's because they're different densities. Air is less dense than glass. So when it becomes goes into glass, it's very thick. It's hard for the waves to go. So they bend. All right? So this is called refraction. All right? So getting back to why these are bent, they should look bent. I don't hopefully they don't look perfectly straight on the picture. I can't really see. Is because it's go the, these waves are traveling through different densities of mantle. So they bend, they refract. So that's your answer for number one. Number two, stop and think. This is kind of a review. I want you to tell me the differences between S waves and P waves. That's number two. So stop and think. Next thing you're gonna do, number three, question number three is I want you to tell me the similarities between S and P waves. Number four, stop and think. I want you to tell me what refraction is. Number five, number five. I want you to tell me why we should not be watching the Tiger King show. Number six, I want you to tell me what part of the earth the S waves cannot travel through. So that's number six. Stop and think. Number six, what part of the earth blocks S waves? The P waves arrive first and the S, wave, S waves come next. One way of an indication of how close you are to the earthquake, if, somebody, if you can detect these waves, we have a seismometer, is the number of seconds between the wave arrivals. So if the P wave arrives, and then it's, I don't know, 20 seconds later, the S waves, you're further away from the earthquake's focus than you would if there's only five seconds between them, or one second. So the closer they arrive, the P and the S waves, if they're right close, if they're one and then the other one comes right after, you're close to the earthquake. You're close to the hypo focus, or obviously, and also the epicenter, because that's right above the hypo focus. So that's how they can determine that time difference, is how they can determine the distance from an earthquake. So P comes first, S comes later, um, and that's the way to determine. So I want you to do, for number seven, number seven, stop and think. I want you to tell me how we can determine how close we are to an earthquake using the waves. As a review, I just want to make sure you understand that the waves are how energy travels. So energy travels in the form of waves. And we are, our whole world is really made up of waves everywhere. Some waves travel through like the glass, cause the glass to shake, or the wood windows to shake. And it refracts, so some waves refract, and they, because they're going from air to glass, so they actually bend, so the waves bend, and they cause a push and pull of the windows. So that's evidence that they're waves. Why would the windows shake otherwise? Um, 
So the sound waves are traveling from the thunder to your windows and to your ears, obviously, you hear them. Okay, so the waves are bending because of refraction, all right, because they're going through different densities. Okay, so the next thing I want to ask is, what is density? So number eight, your question is, what is density? What is density? How do we, how do we define density? All right, we're thinking about dense, something's very dense, like a pool ball. I wish I had those pool balls, they're all in my classroom. Bowling ball, very dense. All the molecules, very packed in tight, small volume. Beach ball is less dense. All right, there's a lot more space. There's the air molecules move around. What, how does the sound of thunder produce the windows, cause the windows to rattle? So I want you to explain that. That is number nine. All right. my alarm in the morning. Really, it's the amount of matter in a given space. If you increase the mass and decrease the volume, it's going to be more dense, right? If you increase the volume and decrease the mass, it'll be less dense. So if you increase a number in the denominator, the whole number becomes less, right? If you increase the number in a numerator, the number becomes larger, the whole number becomes larger. Okay, so this is the formula for density. And your last question, number 10, why is it important to study seismology? So that's number 10. So this is your own field. Why do you think it's important to learn this? Especially, but we're in California, so it's, um, it's pretty relevant here. Geology really does rock. Rock on rock stars. I love you.